Hey everybody, this is Meyer. In this video, what we're gonna be doing is creating a pluck sound to sit kind of on top of the lead and also kind of in its own section. So this is what the sound sounds like. This is the sidechain compressor. Let's hear it with the rest of the stuff. Awesome, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start by, as usual, duplicating the initial patch and I'm just gonna call this Pluck. I'm gonna try to give this a color that I haven't used. Um, that works, I guess, or maybe I'll go with this sort of magenta -y color. And I'm gonna move this right up here next to the lead. And what I want to do is I'm gonna start by taking the lead MIDI and we're just gonna call this Pluck and of course, assign color and with this MIDI we want to do something a little bit different and what I want to do is alternate the notes that are being played so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these notes and just delete them and what I want to do is kind of alternate the bottom and top notes now once again with these plucks you can be you get the chance to be creative Set this to 16th notes. But what generally helps is kind of alternating bottom and top notes where you're kind of playing at least two notes together when the when you want them the notes to actually hit. And then maybe alternating if you want to have some sort of rhythm as well. So let's just go ahead and let me just solo this channel and we'll just get the MIDI and this will be super simple. This will probably be the time, honestly what takes the most time is just getting these notes right. This is pretty much what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna hit the bottom note and then we're gonna hit the top like this, like this, and like this. Take this and just duplicate it over here and just make sure these are all lined up. That looks right except of that. Somehow copying this over. Oh, that's probably why, because I gotta select it all and move it over here. And then this part. Okay, cool, that's, that's probably where we wanna start. We can come back later and fix the MIDI if we want to, but once again, the main point here is just the sound and not so much the MIDI or the notes. This sound is gonna be super simple to create. By default here in Spire, the envelope three is already mapped to the filter cutoff. And the main part of the sound is literally just modulating the filter cutoff with an envelope. That is literally all this sound. So when I turn this down, we'll basically be done. Oops. Pretty much it. <laughs> That's pretty much the whole sound. Um, no, we'll, we'll go here and we'll make sure that we, uh, we get this right. So the first thing I wanna do is turn this up all the way. So we're doing full modulation and we want to bring this down to the point we kind of want it to sustain at. We also want to make sure this is on this really exponential curve. Otherwise it can be a little too gentle. 
I'm, you can, what you can do with the envelope, the amplitude envelope, which is envelope one, is just bring the sustain down and use this decay. And this just makes sure that that first part is a little bit louder. We may not need it, but you can do it. Sometimes you can add a second voice and pan it. What I like to do is have the first oscillator be one voice, copy it to oscillator two, and have this one be two voices with some wide and detune added. That way you still have this oscillator right down the middle, which is making sure that that pluck sound, that transient is hitting exactly the way you want it. And then we have oscillator two to kind of give it some stereo imaging. And when we add a delay later, that's really gonna help pan it around so it's not such a static sound. Because right now it's, we, we hear the bass sound that we want. It's not very flashy yet, but we need to make sure that sound is solid before we start adding the bells and whistles to it. The next thing I want to do is take envelope four and we're going to do the same thing as envelope three, meaning that we have a very tight decay slope. And I'm just going to add a little bit of delay. And what we do with this is we also map this to the filter cutoff. And what this does is this just adds a little bit of click to the beginning of the sound. So what's going on here is this is modulating what this you can imagine this is doing is quickly turning the knob, the cutoff knob down. When we add a second envelope, just for this initial click, it's like really giving it a little bit of punch or accentuation. So you'll hear as I add this and you want this to be really small. That's that click. So without it. I think that's really important. A lot of people forget that and they wonder, oh, why are my plucks not plucking through or punching through? Well, I think it helps if you add another envelope to actually modulate the cutoff as well with a very short decay. And that just makes sure you really are snapping that envelope close. It's kind of really adding to the snappiness. One thing I forgot is to phase lock oscillator one. So remember we do this by just moving this phase knob a little bit. That's sounding good. And honestly, with the rest of this, there, there are a couple other things you could do. You could modulate the pitch with the LFO. I'm not really gonna do that. Um, I like the way that sounds. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go right to the delay. And because we're kind of alternating with dotted 16th notes, you kind of have to think about the rhythm. So if we look at the MIDI, it's once again, we're, we're kind of playing these with two 16th notes in between. I think it may help to have this pluck the delay be on eighth note ping pong. So let's hear what that sounds like. That way the delays are filling up some of the spaces. So let's hear what it would sound like if I did dotted 16th notes instead. See, those are kind of colliding. You can set one to one eighth and one to three sixteenths. So I like one of these on one eighth and one of these on three sixteenth or a dotted, dotted eighth note basically. So let's keep it at that. Go over to the reverb and we're just gonna add a little bit of reverb. And this pre-delay helps push the reverb reflections away from that transient, that initial part of the sound.
Sounding good, I'm just going to turn this compressor on. So with it off. Cool, and we'll just go ahead and turn on the EQ. As usual, we're going to want to take some of this low end out. May not be much there, but we just want to make sure we're not having any of that interfering with our mid bass or sub bass. I'm going to take this high end and just shelf it up just a hair. Bring the Q down so it's a little gentler. And here with this this mid band, what I may do is I may try to give it some energy around 400 hertz, or I may try to scoop some of the energy out around 800 hertz where it can interfere with the lead. So it really just depends. Um, here we only have one band. As usual, you'd probably want to do this with a parametric EQ. Um, but for this, I'm just going to see what does it sound better if I boost here or cut a little bit higher. So that's kind of where some of the energy is. I like doing this. I like that small boost here. This is probably around 800 hertz, but you can just kind of hear it. It's a little kind of nasally there, kind of honky, and that's what I'm trying to take out. And let's just go back, because once again, this is one of those sounds we want to be very precise about, because we need to make sure it's hitting and plucking exactly the way we want it. So yeah, I just needed to turn this decay down just a hair. And let's just try the compressor again if we need to add a little bit more. That's sounding pretty good. Now let's just hear it with everything else. Whether this would sit on top of the lead or we'd use this instead of the lead at a certain section is just kind of a more of a creative decision, but let's just listen. And what you generally do, so I'm going to just take this, I'm going to take this, 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 and the kick, and I'm just going to duplicate them. And what I really want to do is just for these, take this first section and just duplicate this a couple of times. Because this is the kind of mainly what I would use the pluck for. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and take the sidechain compressor from our mid bass, and I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the pluck channel, and I'm also gonna put it on the lead channel. We didn't have it on the lead before, but I think it would be nice to have when that kick is playing.
awesome sounding good thanks you guys so much for watching in the next video we'll create a higher it'll probably be like a longer key or a longer pluck kind of key like sound that we can sit on top of the main lead and the pluck thanks so much for watching see you in the next video